to November 2008. We're in Bathurst and we're here to record the 75th anniversary of the Caribbean. It's now having a recital played on the bell. Many people are out today because it's beautiful sunny weather and the gardens are such a picturesque sight with all the flowers in full bloom. Times being called the Singing Carillion. Of course, it really is the Bathurst and District Soldiers Memorial Carillion. Throughout the course of the afternoon, I do have some interesting facts and figures about the Carillion that I will share with you, and I will probably repeat that on a number of occasions for those people who are coming and going so that hopefully nobody misses out. But the idea of the Carillion began. In 1920, a committee was formed, but it wasn't until 1926 that things started to move. Initially, the idea was that perhaps a statue would be suggested. But We're looking across to All Saints Cathedral, and there's another important structure being assembled there, the Bell Tower, now making uh, progress. And here we come to a large group of people lined up because it's going to be a rare occasion the actual entry into the Caribbean with the eternal flame is open today for the public to, to come inside and have a look so it's quite a significant uh, occasion Bell Tower.
There's also a display of vintage cars, uh, uh, which includes the famous brush car, which is usually only on display in the, the uh, visitors' centre. Perhaps there's a few more little facts that you may be interested in. For instance, what did it cost? Well, bearing in mind that this was 1933, the public paid for this by subscription, by selling bricks at two pence each, bought a bell and paid for the bell. And I'll tell you more about that later on in the afternoon. But the actual cost that you're looking at in those days I'm told was £8,189, 14 shillings and 2 pence. In the main, were responsible for organising and buying of the bricks. Now the last brick, the car was built for 212,000 local red bricks. Nearby is the uh, Bathurst Historical Society's Museum and a display has been arranged in here. Oh, Colin, good to see you again. Yeah. And uh, you're having um, a delicacy there. What is that? Yeah, this uh, is the um, official Carunian ice cream invented by Annie's Ice Cream. Isn't that great? It's isn't very it? nice, especially when you've got a beard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it tastes as good as it looks. <laughs> yeah, it's good. And uh, it's uh, you've been in. And chocolate chip in yeah. it. And Colin, you've been involved in a lot of historical displays and that. Do you think it's good that we. Uh, remember these type of events? Most importantly, yeah, it's very, very important to remember the birth the day of this, of this wonderful, wonderful uh, tribute to the World War heroes. Thank you very much. And what's the taste, basically? Cherry? Sometimes today. I said drinks, I said drinks to Inside the historical museum. Now I just spend it all.
There's going to be a coin trail over on the footpath in front of the courthouse, just like the coin trail was in the early 1930s. It's our tax deductible. So please, at some stage during the afternoon, become involved in our coin, the coin trail in front of the courthouse. Thank you, and thank you, Murray. Now the Carillion is open this afternoon on the cathedral side of King's Parade. Join the queue and take full advantage of the fact that the Carillion is open. Now I think I hear a plane and as we look over the courthouse, there's Mr Graham Bird. over Bathurst at times, but here is the creator of Fergus, and indeed, here's Fergus, and Heather is going to explain to us about the treasure hunt. Heather. Thanks, Boris. Well, hello, boys and girls. And Fergus says hello, too. <laughs> the Carillion is something that Fergus really loves. He loves this building, and he loves what it means, that it's a in memory of all the soldiers who died in the war. And so he's arranged a little treasure hunt around the Carillion. Now see this little name tag I've got in my hand? All right. There's, there's about 30 of those hit around the Carillion, around the veranda, only on this side, on the edges of the gardens, perhaps in the trees or on the poles. And whoever gets the most, there's a prize. You get a Fergus cap that you can wear. Whoever gets this one, there's only one that has the picture of the Carillion on it. See this one? See, that's the Carillion that's up here. This is the best one to find. Special prize. Carillion. The one that's got the Carillion on is the special one. But have a look at all the other ones as well. Bring them all to heaven. Here we are, heaven. An opening of the Carillion. Activities, as we also have, of course, face painting and other children activities on the Russell Street, just in front of the vintage cars. The vintage cars on display from the Bathurst Historic Car. Club. Um, 
who's got the most cards in the treasure hunt. Six, six appears to be a winning score. <laughs> well, here we go, the Fergus cap. <laughs> Thank you, Heather, and congratulations again, Heather, on a on a on a wonderful read. All about Fergus McPherson. The popular spot worth visiting, and particularly today, is Annie's Ice Cream Parlour because they have a special ice cream brought out just for today. Looks delicious. And the famous statue of Evan surveying after his exploration of this area. Very famous statue and has been seen in the other historic film that I helped restore. That is sesquicentenary film by Duncan MacDonald. Alan McRae, you must be very happy with the day. Oh, I certainly am. I um, actually can't believe the numbers that are coming out today. It's a beautiful location too, isn't it? Not only for the Caribbean, but the park itself. Yes, I think we're quite, quite fortunate with the Bathurst um, City Council just being able to leave all the flowers in because they had actually planned to pull them out, so they'll be coming out tomorrow. Now, the Carillion, uh, can you give me a few facts about it? Well, it's quite interesting, really. Um, it, it was conceived in the early 1920s, and they actually planned to put a statue here. Um, then they, um, one of the, uh, the gentlemen who was on the committee went to England, and he actually saw a Carillion Tower over there, and he came back and said, well, let's have a tower over here. So. On the night they were having the meeting, um, there was quite a big um, downpour of rain and uh, quite a number of the committee actually couldn't come, but the ones that were there decided, yep, well, let's, let's have a carillion. And um, so from there, it actually took um, over five years to actually build. Mm, a wonderful project and uh, such uh, lovely sound from those bells today that we hear. Yeah, certainly it is, isn't it? And it's quite remarkable that it was actually constructed at a time of the Great Depression, sort of penny by penny, brick by brick.
Now, there is talk about doing some restoration work on the tower and uh, perhaps the uh, mechanism that plays the bells, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. It's probably more the mechanism um, and getting uh, the bells to be actually uh, played properly. So that's um, the primary reason why they're trying to make um, money for that. Um, today is a celebration, and um, but on um, in the future, um, or they will be raising money to try and finish that. A wonderful, uh, wonderful project, and just adjacent to it, we can see great progress occurring on the bell tower too of the cathedral. Yes, um, quite ironic, isn't it, that um, we are celebrating sort of two lots of bells at the moment. One's under construction and the other one hopefully um, will be finished in the next few years. And Alan, uh, you collect a lot of nostalgia, I suppose you have a lot of photographs about the Carillion? Yes, we've managed to get um, almost a hundred photos um, taken in the past and um, uh, uh, there's quite a, a nice range there. Also, um, some nice images of the Carillion on, on early pottery, um, all a souvenir wear of the 1920s through to the, the 1960s. And it was unique today that people could come through uh, and see the eternal flame, wasn't it? Yes, well, it probably is the time, uh, the first time for the um, eternal flame, um, sorry, the internal flame. Um, in the past, um, up until the 1960s, the flame actually wasn't there. In the late 1930s and 1940s, there were tours, but this is the first time for many, many years. Yourself and your committee have done a wonderful job. It's uh, it's great to see uh, people uh, coming out in such uh, large numbers and also. Uh, uh, respecting the history of the uh, city. Yeah, it certainly um, is a landmark and, and yes, we've had uh, a wonderful committee to organise this. Um, it's been organised in only a few months, but um, I think um, it's actually come together, uh, especially with all the, um, all the various aspects, including uh, the games uh, that were played during um, the Depression years and the scouts and the guides are conducting them at the other end of the park. Wonderful. Well, congratulations, Alan. Thank, Thank you, you for the much. interview. Thank you. This balloon stall is very popular with the children. And the official ceremony is shortly to come up. Um, you can see the um, different
school and RSL band members getting ready for some of their recitals. Coin in there, bloody, bloody, no coin. Oh, yesterday, amazing, that was scary. Yesterday, wasn't it? Amazing. How are you? Busy again. How are you? Doing a great job there. Uh, tell me about what you're doing. Uh, what we've got is the uh, Carillion Money Trial. We're asking people to empty their, their purses with uh, their small change, put it on the uh, silhouette of the uh, Carillion, and it's just really a way of. Uh, you know, getting the young kids involved in uh, putting a few few dollars. Like in the old days, they raised pennies yeah. um, to buy a brick. Uh, this is sort of the, the, the 75th anniversary version of the penny a brick. So people are just emptying their purses with small coin. It's great. Very good. And uh, uh, how have you both felt the day's been going? Fantastic. It really is. It really yeah. is great. The organising committee have done a fantastic job and uh, they've done it in a relatively short period of time, in three or four months and, and uh, I think it's great to see the Bathurst community come out and, and embrace our iconic Carillion. For sure and what a wonderful time with all the gardens in full bloom still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, as always, as always the, uh, the council staff do a wonderful job of, of King's Parade and uh, the Carillion sits proudly in the centre of it and uh, it, it, as you say it really is a testament to uh, a great spring I think. For sure. Well, thank you both very much. You're doing Thanks. a great job. There. Thanks, Bruce.
skills under the direction of Mary McGrath. Thank you girls. Thank you. <laughs>
which we have there for all of you to purchase are some bumper stickers to celebrate today. So please, before you go home, don't forget to slip across to the museum and leave with a bumper sticker to celebrate the 75th birthday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. by all the children here present on this occasion in King's Parade. Now, it's been carried before me as we speak. This is the children's cake. Bathurst War Memorial Carillion. Yeah, we're going to ask Heather to bring it forward, and we're going to ask Heather especially, would she cut the children's cake representing the 75th anniversary of this wonderful war memorial? Fergus. Thank you, Morris. Well, Fergus could probably have about a good go, so I'll just help him a little bit. <laughs> Thank you, Heather. Oh, I think I think they want you to at least begin to cut it. <laughs> A wonderful photo opportunity, folks. Seventy-five years, the Bathurst War Memorial Committee. Seventy-five years, happy birthday. Thank you, Fergus, and thank you especially to Heather.
now provide a proper keyboard, which is extremely exciting. And I'm here today as a member of the Carillion Trust uh, to present um, the first print of the Carillion by Graham Lupp uh, to our first Crown sponsor. And I'd like to invite Mr. Tim Sargent to come forward uh, to receive this presentation. And we'd like to thank him very much for his Crown sponsorship. Mr. Tim Sargent. Thank you very much to both Ms. Barlow and Julia Hansen. Thank you, Fiona, and, uh, and especially, of course, thank you. Now, I suspect that the cake will shortly be available for the children. Bearing in mind, I said that a little bit later on in our ceremony, we will have a cake especially for the adults. Each. The 35 bells that you've been listening to this afternoon were founded at Taylor's Foundry in Loughborough in, in England, about 200 kilometres north of London. That foundry has been there since the 16th or 17th century to, to um, churn out all over the world wonderful bells. TSU students and staff members who love to see. Now they are under the direction of Mr Christopher Clopper and today they will perform three numbers. Three? Two numbers. <laughs> Slight correction. <laughs> Two numbers. <laughs>
along the lines of the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, and the nurses.
draw attention to the fact of course that these songs were about the army and the navy the air force and the nurses and they would like to finish their rendition this afternoon by a thank you to those services the senior spice girls Oh, 
Mike Webber this afternoon, very busy. Back to babies. I asked her how I would know that. She said, Morris, you'll know. Thank you. 
connection to the birthday girl or boy. Now the special guests today here are the people of Bathurst who were those that were here in 1933 at the opening of the Carillion. And I have met quite a few already and uh, Morris you're going to help acknowledge some of these special guests. I have put my foot in it by asking people if they were here and they said I'm far too young. So with forgiveness to those people who I asked but I do know there are two special ladies over there. There's Jan Page's mother over there, and there's Brad Ambrose over there. So put your hands up. Anybody else that was here, please. Come on, there's a lady there. Any more, Morris? I think there's a couple of hands in the audience. Yes, there is. Yeah. Yeah. An active group in the community. All Saints College and St. Stanislaus College still flourish. The scouts and the guides were there then, and they're over there with Barry Pickup and his group today. Raised money to build the Carillion, remember fundraising. Joan Seaman, who was now Joan Brown, and mother of well-known council staff member Wendy McDougall, remembers as a 13-year-old giving a penny for a brick. And I think it was Mrs. Jan Page's mother also remembers, and Brad remembers the penny for a brick. They take it on a Monday. Denise Garland, who is an accomplished musician and is here today, is also connected to the event. She's the granddaughter of the first custodian of the Carillion, who was called Tony Hicks, and his son, Eric Hicks, book with lots of lovely trivia. And there's newspapers of the time, too. Another photo in Alan's book, which so wonderfully represents Bathurst and its community, is the picture of five girls taken in 1963. We have Janet Wood, now known as Jan Page, whose mother's here, who has made a wonderful contribution to the festivities today. Thank you, Jan, very much. Gay Marshall, now Gay Noyes, Susan Smith, now Sue Sargent, and Mary Kelk, now Mary Mesner. The music of the bells and the music made by the people of Bathurst are powerful connections between past and present. The first music played on the Carillion was the hymn, Oh God, Our Help in Ages Past. And that was written in 1719 and was sung at Winston Churchill's funeral. And it was also played on the Civic Centre clock in Southampton where I went to school. So it's a song hymn that we're all very familiar with. Bach and Handel were played in 1933 and they continued to be played by our young Bathurst musicians in the Bathurst Chamber Orchestra. Bathurst Regional Council is proud to have looked after the Carillion since 1938 when it took over its care. Although 
It's reported that in 1930, Council said it was not able to offer any support to building the Carillion. Above all, the Carillion still serves as the focus for the city's annual remembrance of the men and women who went to war. The names on the Carillion are the names of loved ones, the names of members of all our families. And still the bells ring out to honour the loss from the communities of the villages of the area. On behalf of Bathurst Regional Council and the Mayor of Bathurst, Councillor Paul Toole, I welcome you all to the birthday party of our Carillion. Who represents this afternoon the Bathurst Historical Society. Mr Christopher Morgan. Celebrate the meaning of the great tower which rises here in the centre of this beautiful formal park, right in the centre of Bathurst. And in doing so, we are reminded of the service and sacrifice of our soldiers in war and of the vision of our forefathers in the building of this great tower which dominates the built heritage and the whole landscape of Bathurst. Maybe we take a bit for granted this beautiful King's Parade on which the tower stands and which has hosted the wonderful community celebrations and music and ceremony which we have enjoyed today, a gift to the community by the many volunteers and event organisers who have staged this fabulous program. Clay soil, which was part of a sequence of gently falling drainage terraces leading down from the foot of the marshy, boggy area, providing the habitat for a range of animals and plants on the Bathurst Plains. In a sense, this place was a Wiradjuri garden. Indeed, the whole of the Bathurst Plains was their garden. And early European explorers noted the abundance of wild ducks, whose descendants still occupy McCaddy Park nearby, possums, emus, kangaroos, wallabies, tortoises, goannas, parrots, galahs, and all those other creatures to which the Wiradjuris of Bathurst were and still are connected after 50,000 years. In dry seasons, it was less useful to the Wiradjuris, but appeared, to the Europeans at least, as a much more useful, perfectly flat, solid stretch of ground exactly right for the centre of the proposed town of Bathurst. This is why, when the city was first designed by Surveyor General Mitchell, uh, Major Thomas Mitchell in 1832, and surveyed and laid out by Surveyor J.B. Richards in 1833, exactly a hundred years before this Carillion was built, this ground where we are standing was designated to be at the very centre of the future town and was therefore seen right from the start of the evolution of modern Bathurst as a very special place with special meaning in the civic, residential and commercial life of the city. It became for the Europeans a symbolic central place just as Mount Panorama and the other hills and the Macquarie River are sacred to the Wiradjuris. A perfectly appropriate site for a memorial to those who fought and those who died in the Great War of 1914 to 1918. To really understand this tower, we need to place it in the context of the time 75 years ago and before. When the idea of a war memorial was first raised, uh, the war had only been over for a year and a massive epidemic of mnemonic influenza was spreading across the world and apart from anything else, was wiping out citizens of Bathurst. The motor car was new to the streets of the town. Aeroplane flight was beginning, and it was the era of the great aviators like Lindbergh and Kingsford Smith, with their transoceanic and round-the-world flights. Radio was becoming a household fixture. Electric lights were being switched on in Bathurst for the first time. Women were beginning, were beginning to gain equal rights. You could go to the movies and hear what was going on. They were no longer silent films. Canberra was being built and so was the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Farlap was racing and body line dominated the cricket. The Windmondale Dam was under construction to try and resolve 15 years of debate and argument in council about the ever more precarious state of Bathurst's diminishing water supply. And even so, the new dam was inadequate within five years of its construction. During these years of the Bathurst Carillion, the Advanced Bathurst League had been formed, this was in 1924, in an effort to liven up the Bathurst Council, which apparently just wouldn't make any decisions. Other groups formed or restarted in the same decade, the Chamber of Commerce, the Country Women's Association, the RSL, Rotary, Apex, the Horticultural Society reformed, and many of the other institutions we regard as old and established in Bathurst today were being formed at that time. And during these years, the Great Depression bit deeper and deeper into the lives and livelihoods of the people of Bathurst. A really good short historical account of the story of this Caribbean was written by a former deputy headmaster of Bathurst High School, Kay Easton, and this is his very brief account. When one considers the extent to which the Caribbean has become the centre and symbol of Bathurst, it is hard to realise that it was built only after almost interminable discussion and delays, changes of mind and shortage of funds. The idea of a memorial was first mooted in 1919 and the first meeting to consider it was held in January 1920. 
there was great difference of opinion about whether the memorial should have practical as well as commemorative value. When it was decided that it should be a memorial only, a competition was held and prizes announced. Nothing happened. A design was commissioned from Gilbert Doble, designer of the Evans Memorial. Still nothing was done. The project was revived in 1926 and a meeting in August accepted the suggestion of G.H. Hoskins that a memorial carillion, similar to the one he had seen in England, be built. A design for the tower was accepted from J.D. Moore. Bells were, were ordered from the Bell Founders in Loughborough, England, and an energetic committee set about raising funds. Money, however, came in slowly. Work on the tower began in March 1929. The Bells arrived in April and were stored with Webb & Co until the tower was ready. Cash was short, however, and they stayed there until May 1933. The last brick of the tower having been laid by R.W. Peacock, the Honorary Secretary of the Committee, on Anzac Eve, an appropriate occasion. The bells were put in position and all was ready for the official opening on Armistice Day 1933 in the presence of 15,000 people. The opening recital was given by A.A.B. Rancloud, Honorary Carillionist of the University of Sydney. The following day, Sunday the 12th of November, the Reverend James Green, Senior Chaplain, conducted the ceremony of dedication. There was still a debt of £374 on the tower and it was not completely wiped off until September 1936. And even today, our community continues to raise money to finish the playing mechanism of the Carillion through the much hoped for installation of a manual clavier player mechanism. I believe that sometimes a community achieves something in the building of a monument or the commissioning of an artwork or sculpture or the laying out of a public park or garden or the refinement of a public space whose outcome is greater than anyone could imagine at that time. And this magnificent Art Deco Carillion is, I think, Bathurst's case in point. It was not just that our forebears wanted to commemorate and acknowledge the extraordinary sacrifice of our soldiers and all who served, and particularly those who go, whose lives were given up in war, although this is the reason for the Carillion's existence. But this tower also rose as a symbol of Bathurst and its village's self-belief in the difficult times of the Great Depression, when, despite the fact that everyone lived in the very hardest of times, this great and very expensive monument was built and paid for, brick by brick anyway, by the citizens of the Bathurst region. This Carillion sometimes stands quite silent, reminding us of the sacrifice of the soldiers of Bathurst and of all who served in our armed forces. It reminds us of the legend of Anzac, a story woven into Australian history by C.E.W. Bean, Australia's official war historian of the First World War and a citizen of Bathurst. It reminds us of the great struggle of good over evil in the Second World War, which was documented by Australia's official war historian of the Second World War, Gavin Long, also a citizen of Bathurst. And it reminds us of all the subsequent wars and conflicts in which our men and women have served. This Carillion sometimes sings to us. It reminds us that a war memorial can also be a symbol of hope to its gift of music. In this case, we see it as a gigantic musical instrument, the biggest in Australia for sure, whose music adds to the rich musical, artistic and cultural landscape of Bathurst. The eternal flame housed within it provides a link for us to the great national war memorials of the world and to the flame burning in the pool of remembrance in the National War Memorial in Canberra, preserving forever the memory of those who died in war. It also reminds us of the wonderful work of our own Bathurst RSL sub-branch, who are the custodians, keepers and protectors of this memorial and this flame. Perhaps more than anything else though, this great Carillion reminds us of the tenacity of spirit of our citizens in the hard times of economic recession and depression, who nevertheless wanted us to remember the fallen and those who served, and who wanted this tower to be a focus for our daily celebration of the freedom and democracy with which we are blessed in Bathurst and Australia, and for which they gave their lives. As Easton said in his essay on the history of the tower, the Carillion is the centre and symbol of Bathurst. As Lieutenant Colonel Hyman said at the official dedication ceremony 75 years ago when 15,000 citizens assembled here, Within these hallowed walls will be kept forever green the names of the men and women of the district who gave all they had to give, so that it may be said of those who passed that they did not die in vain. For me, this celebration is important because of all my great uncles and my two grandfathers and some of my own uncles who served in either the Boer War, World War I or World War II, and my mother's uncle, who was one of those Anzacs who died on the beach as he set foot on Gallipoli at dawn on the 25th of April, 1915. And this memorial reminds my family of their service, as it does in a similar way to so many people assembled here today. Knowing the meaning of this tower makes me feel proud to be a citizen of the Carillion City. But I think the last word should be given to R.M. Peacock, who said, as he laid the last brick 
on the highest point of the tower on Anzac Day Eve 1933. Dominating everything, the tower rose supreme. Thank you. Thank you, Christopher. The guard today is supplied by B Company of the 1st 19th Royal New South Regiment. We are particularly grateful. During this next part of the service, we will be using the services of the Bathurst City and RSL Concert Band and assembled behind me, the Allegri Singers. It's my pleasure now to introduce the President of the Bathurst RSL Subbranch, Mr Bill Abbott. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, especially the younger generation, gathered here this evening. First, may I congratulate the committee who has spent many hours organising today's function. Thank you and well done. This is one of very few occasions when gathered here at the Carillion, we are actually celebrating, not commemorating. Next Tuesday, 11th 11th, Remembrance Day, we will gather right here once again, just as citizens of Bathurstan District have for the last 75 years. This year, we'll hear a young girl from Rockley deliver the address as we commemorate the very significant 90th anniversary of the armistice that ended World War I coming into force, bringing to an end four years of bloodshed that took the lives of 61,919 Australians. That's nearly 62,000 empty seats at the table of so many families. Most people knew someone killed, maybe a father, son, daughter, a brother, sister or a friend. Next Tuesday, even if you can't attend the service, we urge you to observe a moment's silence at 11am. And wear a poppy with pride and respect for the men and women who have answered the call of their country. We are very fortunate that Bathurst and district citizens were just magnificent people. Look at the memorial they constructed during very tough financial times. Originally intended as a memorial to the soldiers from Bathurstan District who paid the supreme sacrifice during World War I, the World War II Indoor Wars, it has since served as a memorial to our service personnel from all theatres of war. We we'll remember, honour, pay tribute with pride and gratitude to the men and women of all wars for their magnificent efforts, their service so freely and voluntarily given, not forgetting those who contributed as civilians at home and abroad, that we who survive and generations to come may live in peace and security in this most wonderful country, Australia, we all love so much. For 75 years, Ballast and district people have stood right here and vowed, we will remember them, lest we forget. But I please ask you now to join with the Bathurst City and RSL band and the Allegri singers and him, abide with me.
shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. Lest we forget. As I said, the guard today was supplied by B Company of the 1st 19th Royal New South Wales Regiment. Now to carry on our ceremony, we present the Bells of Bathurst by the Allegri Singers who have been very patiently waiting in the sun. The Bells of Bathurst.
A display inviting pictures of the carillion.